feature presentation. Welcome back to another untitled screening review screening. Uh, streaming. streaming. That's what I was trying to say. An untitled... I mean, we are in a movie theater, <laughs> yeah, we to are, be we fair. Are. I got screenings on the mind. Um, an untitled streaming review. I am one of your hosts, Matt Rohrbeck, alongside. He's allergic to tomatoes, but he is tomato meter approved, Eric Marchin. Matt, I'm ready to re-enter Cobra Kai and fight the good fight. Let's it's go. One of, it's one of those things where, like, talking about it, we have to be vague because yeah. a part of it is, you know, you don't want to ruin the spoilers, right, yeah. and let people kind of discover the, the big moments for themselves. And we also don't have uh, the list uh, with us oh, that, I'll pull that up, usually so kind of gives you and an we idea. We kind of know what we're not yeah. supposed to, yeah. But essentially, we're, we're, we're at season five now. Uh, this show is still still going strong, and you know, I'm I'm not going to spoil anything from season five. But with the ending of season four, we saw certain characters part ways, and we pick up with where we last left off. Specifically, I think uh, we can t- we can we're going to spoil everything up to Cobra Kai five. Yes. So four one to four, we're going to spoil. We won't spoil anything from five on this review. I don't even know if we said it, but Eric's already alluded to it. We are reviewing Cobra Kai five, spoiler free. The whole season, we've seen all ten episodes. Yeah. Um, but we will not be spoiling any major plot details or reveals or anything like that. Basically, only stuff that's been in the trailers that have dropped and things like that. But we will uh, talk about everything leading up until the beginning of season five. So if you're not caught up yet. Please go watch the other seasons because they're great. Yeah. Um, so it, you can kind of talk about what happened at the end of last season. Okay, 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 fair enough. So at the end of last season, we saw that Cobra Kai defeated Miyagi-Do and Eagle, Eagle Fang. Fang's sort of collab against Kreese and uh, Terry Silver. Um, and in the process, uh, they had to close down uh, Miyagi-Do and uh, Eagle Fang and, and sort of hang up the, the, the dojo, but also the geese, the geese and, and kind of move on, you know, because a, a deal's a deal, a bet's a bet. Um, and then on top of that, you had the betrayal with uh, Terry Silver double-crossing uh, Crease, and uh, you had Johnny Lawrence um, going to find uh, Miguel, who left uh, the competition early feeling the pressure but also wanting to potentially find his biological father in mexico um very soap opera uh, (laughs) extremely melodramatic i don't know if i have a whole lot to say in terms of criticisms because like if you like the show and you're already you know four seasons in, you're getting more of the same I, i think the only real sort of um critique of the show is this season does look a little bit more saturated a little bit more blown out with the cinematography um it has kind of this more kind of um brighter kind of digital look than in previous seasons and 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 Cobra Kai's never been like you know a, a cinematic series really but at the same time this does look like okay they shot this one you know right after season Four, really yeah. you know they shot it back to back and you can kind of tell that it was maybe a little bit more rushed overall but um you know if you love william zapka's performance you're still gonna love uh johnny lawrence in this you know if if you love ralph macchio you're gonna love to see where you know daniel larusso goes and i think the relationships are the strongest aspect and there's yeah. enough sort of of a rotation of characters to kind of play off that still keeps it interesting and i like the idea of bringing in characters that you've seen a little bit in previous seasons but now kind of getting full-fledged arcs i think chosen chosen um, which was revealed at the end of last season that he was going to be is incredible yeah. he is amazing he's and, awesome and there's yeah. this weird thing of like part of it's also like this weird undercover police procedural yeah. uh, that comes up uh, more than once and that's a lot of fun and and i really do think um, Thomas Ian Griffith as as Terry, Terry Silver, Silver is just having a blast. Yeah. Like you can tell, he is really having a good time. I know. I'm and if sorry about the background noise and everyone, everything. Everyone, we've uh, we're in a dojo. We're yeah, we're in a dojo. <laughs> no, we're recording uh, on location during TIFF uh, for this review, so you might hear some background noise and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I'm completely with you. I mean, if you're all in on this series already, and if you're watching a review of the fifth season, you probably already are. Yeah. Um, you're gonna be satisfied, I think. I mean. 
they left them in, a, in an interesting spot, you know, with Kreese going, being framed and gone to prison and, and Terry Silver being full Terry, full evil. Um, I scary think, Terry, like, man. Scary Terry's back. And, like, it took a while last season for him to get there, right? They slow yeah. played it, which I think was such a great idea. Uh, but he is full, like, Karate Kid 3 evil Scary Terry in this, and it is phenomenal i mean i i, I love I, I love this show it, it's everything you just said it's it feels like a soap opera at times it's uh corny but then thrilling um the uh choreography and the fight sequences is always awesome like there's a couple sequences that maybe don't quite get to the levels of like that school that school one take in the season in the, two in season two in the finale but like there are some really good karate moments throughout there's tons of hype moments there's some like teases of where the show might go in in future seasons and things like that of like that aren't necessarily where what the plot exactly is it is part of the season but um it i don't know and you brought up the characters it really is about the characters and as corny as it gets and how ridiculous it gets and the level of escalation you get in this series let alone this season um I'm always laughing at how dumb it is, but I'm always surprised at how invested I am yeah. and like how much I care about Miguel and Robbie and, and Johnny's relationship and how much each character gets their own arc and they're all, you know, connected but slightly different with like Tori and um, and uh, Kenny Lily, even this Kenny, season. Yeah, yeah, Kenny is so good, dude. That kid is like, I'm like. This kid needs to play Miles Morales in, yeah. in the MCU, for one. He's got a real um, presence. And he's the best actor out of all the kids, I What's think. the actor's like, name? I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to look it up, it up as you talk. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that kid is fantastic. Um, you know, some kids are better than others. And the, and the show's always got this interesting vibe to it where you're like, this is both bad and good at the same time. And I just love it. It's just got this weird... It's got that fast and furious level of like you know it everyone's kind of in on it but also not in on it but then it's also bad but it's also genuinely good and it's just the hardest thing to describe but like if it's your cup of tea it's going to be your cup of tea and like it's it delivers on all fronts like i think the pacing of this season it started off a bit slow but it picks up and like i said that level of escalation that this show has is always upping the ante to be more and more ridiculous and like more like okay what could they possibly do that could be worse than last season it's like oh there's ways where you're like oh shit i didn't think this show would go to this area and they do and whether it's you know, like at the end of last season, framing someone for attempted murder. <laughs> this season I mean, just that's gets not like, funny, but it's funny just in the context of this show. Of this show, right? And like, it's it, it knows what it is. It kind of references that, and and throughout the series, it's its own universe and its own world where karate is king. And it's just like it's the valley, man. It, it, it's so fun. It's just like it's the most fun I have watching TV. Dallas Dupree Young um, is the yeah. name of Kenny. Payne. That kid is good, man. But He's I really mean, that's good. that's an important thing. This again, this is not spoiler because this has kind of been thematic of the last couple of seasons and I think of overall even in the Karate Kid stories is that it's a cycle and you yeah. look at this, the cycle of these relationships and how they come together and a lot of the times it's about redeeming yourself and trying to make up for past mistakes. We see how Kreese trained and taught Johnny yeah. and how Johnny treated his own son son robbie but then also tried to redeem himself with miguel yeah. and then robbie trying to help kenny and then yeah looking how he screwed that up yeah. and like again even and even with, chosen to yeah. with with daniel right and yeah. like and and, and, and 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 daniel with with robbie yeah exactly right it's all and then even tori and crease right now yes during yes the season, right like it's it it is but it's all done in in its own way with the and being true to those characters that I think is great. Um, the other thing that's awesome and not a spoiler because we know Chosen's in this season. Like you're getting to that point where all the main villains from the Karate Kid movies, at least the the Larusso ones, are now in the show. So just seeing all three of those characters like on screen at the same time is like really really fun like you just look back and you're like oh shit this is the villain from one two and three um all in the same show and you just and I, actually talking to each yeah, other which is like 
absolutely wild to think about when you watch those movies back from the late 80s yeah and like you i just something you probably didn't think you were ever going to get and it somehow works and it's so much fun like it's so much fun. yeah because you you don't really like when it comes to sequels like the karate kid movies or or any kind of like action franchise of of that period you know, thinking of a legacy series now or sequel, like seeing, you know, previous antagonists kind of actually having a dialogue with each other in a way that kind of feels like they've grown up. Yeah. Um, and and it's, it's, it's like, oh, this is how I went up against LaRusso and this is how <laughs> yeah. I did it. And like, you know, they're comparing and contrasting, but they've also become better people uh, in the process of now kind of finding, you know, uh, not great emotional depth but like for the show it yeah. i think works really well and like you do care about you know johnny trying to be the best version of himself and continue to work on himself and not wanting to become crease you know and like even crease kind of feeling like you know there's a vulnerability there with how he treated johnny and how he kind of sees that a little bit and like how he's screwing up with tori, tori yeah you know and, and how he doesn't want to be terry <laughs> yeah like, yeah and terry's yeah. just like <laughs> like, like the true evil <laughs> yeah. and 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 again like i just love that you know thomas ian griffith hasn't you know acted in, in quite some time and he comes back <laughs> he falls and, right back into it dude. He's, like, he's so much better in this show than he was in the karate kid part yeah. three and i think part he of it was a cartoon was, character in three where here i yeah. feel like he's kind of menacing right? he is yeah and, and like they turn him into a Bond villain and it works so well and like I like how they're bringing the different kind of fighting styles into yeah. this world and actually kind of talking about how you know like Japanese and Korean culture clashed and like the occupation yeah. and, and things like that like again it's not like deep for what this show is but at least it's trying to acknowledge some of that stuff which I think is is more than you could uh, hope for in a show like this but again like it's it's a very funny show like it's corny as all hell but you you you're watching it and you're like okay you know what these moments are earned because as much as like you see some goofy sight gags with with johnny in this season or even in previous seasons zapka is just so perfect as, as lawrence like yeah. he just falls back into this like it, he's so lived in but also sincere and that's what makes it work so well and if you're a top gun fan you'll be delighted <laughs> yeah. by this there's some great top gun um, stuff perfect timing on all of that yeah stuff. yeah and and the and the music cues are what you'd expect it to be and yeah again visually speaking it's not the greatest looking show in this no. season kind of does feel a little bit um uh, more like, kind of yeah. washed out overall yeah, yeah. but I, I don't disagree there but like and some it, of the cgi like there are some effects that kind of it's like you can tell it's like post-production stuff oh absolutely but like it's it's kind of what we talked about in rrr where it's just like it fits the vibe of the movie or the show where I, like it never bothers me right whether like any of that corniness the digital cinematography and like it's it's especially jarring when they cut to like the film footage from the karate kid movies which they've done throughout the whole show yeah like that juxtaposition is always like man i wish this looked like that <laughs> but like it doesn't and i even think those first couple seasons weirdly that were on youtube looked nicer than the netflix seasons when it came to cinematography and yeah. that's maybe because netflix has their standard of like here are the cameras we use for dolby vision and for 4k and well how and quick stuff like though that. they're releasing that these too, shows yeah right? they shot this back to back with the last season and and i i i absolutely agree with all of that it's not the prettiest looking show you can tell some of the sets they use it looks very much like a set and like you know it's but fine. it's not it's not it's not going to be a Co stanley cooper no movie and either. i'm fine and you're fine with that <laughs> yeah. it's like everything we said it's like everything fits this universe that they built fits this show that they built and is amazing for this show that they built right like i feel like there's it's a perfect legacy sequel series like I, you, I would never have guessed that five seasons in and I would take a hundred more of the Miyagi-verse TV show, right? Like, it's just wild. Like, the Karate Kid movies, I remember watching when I was a kid, the first one, never really, like, I liked it, but, like, I never really cared that much about it. And I know it was a little bit before our time, a little bit. Yeah, but it played um, a lot in syndication and yeah. on cable and stuff like that. And, and I think it kind of had a bit of a life because it was, you know, like, back when that first movie was released and, and was directed by John G. Advilson, it was known as, like, the kids' version of Rocky. Yeah. And, you know, like, 
it, Always Pat funny Marie, when they bring up Rocky in the series. Well, I mean, when like they play too. Eye of the Tiger yeah. or any of the songs from the Rocky soundtrack, it's kind of weird. It's almost like a meta joke, but it's like, is it, do they know that like this, this song is from Rocky? Um, and then, yeah, like when we, like Pat Morita got an Oscar nomination for supporting actor for the first Karate Kid movie um, in '85. Uh, so, That's awesome. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, you know, like it, it had, it was a big deal when it was released. But like over time, like once you got to three and the next Karate Kid, it's like it kind of went its course. Rocky stayed a little bit longer just because I think Stallone was such a driving force yeah. of that franchise. Um, but uh, yeah, like I think that like as a revival series goes, as kind of like a really fun kind of just you know nostalgic kind of bump it works on those levels and but it just knows its characters yeah. i think right like that's what some of these legacy sequels have kind of fumbled like look at jurassic world was awful and like even the star wars movies fumbled in in, in parts and uh, it's hard like these guys really understand these characters and like know how to use them to their strengths and make them feel both authentic to what their characters were and having that growth that you talked about sometimes uh, the opposite in Terry Silver's case too, yeah. of just like dub- the doubling, regression, doubling and tripling down on who Terry Silver is, which is also um, kind of like a, a, a slight against Crease because if Crease had never poked the bear, Terry probably wouldn't have, you know, become exactly. Terry again. Exactly, right? he was a vegan and like yeah. just chilling, and yeah, um, it's it's so much fun. And I know, guys, we're kind of tiptoeing around specifics and stuff we kind of have to just because we have a list of like spoilers we we can't talk about and we just want you to enjoy this yourself really like so i know maybe a lot of our cobra kai reviews sound very similar but it's just like it delivered and i think both eric and i were satisfied with it like it's the only show that i literally yell at my tv or i go like holy shit or i'm like yes like when things are happening and i i'm like always surprised at that level of escalation and the finale in this like i feel lives up to all those finales from those previous seasons and some because like there are some moments where i'm like i cannot believe i'm witnessing this right now this is so funny and really exciting and um i just i, I love this series and it so is much. the definition of a binge worthy show like it is hard to stop when you start watching it because it is just such a pure easy entertainment watch easy watch yeah. and I, I think maybe we should finish off by saying you know like uh, on the last regular show um and we've been talking about dragon ball z yeah. And it does feel like there is a certain amount of inspiration that is coming from... It's very anime, yeah. the show. Like, just not even just Dragon Ball, but they, it. I think those the creators, those guys, have to be anime fans. Because I feel like they learn a lot from anime shows of that level of escalation, that bringing characters back, the, like, powering up of, like, gaining new skills and things like that. Like, it, it did remind me of Dragon Ball, especially with the karate element, too, right? The martial arts. Yeah, and, and, and like, even, like, getting to the point of having, you know, um, uh, fights and, and tournaments and things sure, like yeah, that, yeah. right? Where, like, it kind of, the world gets bigger and bigger yeah. and it gets more ridiculous yeah. and over the top. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a season of Cobra Kai by like eight or nine, if it continues that long, where they go to space <laughs> and they go to Namek and like, you know, they kind of, they, they get their own Dragon Balls. Like, it is that ridiculous of a show where, you know, you mentioned Fast and the Furious earlier, but it does feel like, to your point, where you, you get to a moment where it does kind of lose reality and like you know a lot of these characters like there is a little bit of kind of like a class kind of comparison where you're looking at like Johnny's point of view who's more of the blue collar guy who's down on his luck yeah. at the beginning of this and, and trying Daniel's, to put himself back together yeah. and Daniel's done really well with his you know car company and Amanda I think the one character that still is the weak link is um, Sam um, Sam LaRusso yeah. um, and it's not that I don't dislike the character but it just kind of feels like they, they don't know what to do, do with, with her. her yeah and i i mean like i do like some of like the relationships and the love triangles and the heartbreak because like <laughs> yeah. it reminds you it's like okay like this world is also very insular to the point where like when you're when you're that age you feel like all of that is 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 the end or the, the most meaningful part of your life and yeah. then you get older like daniel and 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 johnny and you realize okay well that's you know that part was only a small bit of it you know but there's great relationship stuff with the adults as well yes, i think yes. it's this, this season especially um and all the relationships it feels very like 
you know, um, it reminds me of high school TV shows that we would watch when we were younger in those moments when it's just the high school age people, but then you jump through the adults and it's just got, it's just this weird mash of things that just like, you wouldn't think you threw all these things in a blender that it would work, but it, it, it kind of weirdly worked perfectly. So, yeah. uh, it is great. Absolutely watch it if you're a fan of the other seasons. Um, if you're not, you're probably not listening to this anyway. So yeah, I mean, if you're um, if, if if you're not in like already committed to this, like you're not going to be. Yeah, but if you are, you're probably all in, like Eric and I are. So yeah. um, I'm gonna give it another five out of five. I think it's great. I am going because I mentioned some of the things with the uh, cinematography yeah. and even you know where this season ends I think maybe was a little yeah. less satisfying I agree with that actually I'm well, gonna but. give it a four out of five but it's still immensely entertaining and pleasurable yeah. and fun yeah. and like it just puts a smile on your face yeah. and you feel good hanging out with these characters I absolutely agree I agree with that the ending felt weirdly uh, not rushed a sort of rushed but it, like it I, I don't think like, this is spoiling anything it, it is set up yeah there's a lot of setup it sure. does feel like a game of chess that's kind of still being yeah. worked out yeah 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 um thank you all for listening uh we really do appreciate it uh sorry there's no video versions right now or you're welcome that there's no video versions of eric and i's face we're very disheveled already during uh i the shaved <laughs> We're not disheveled yet. Um, yeah, we'll be doing uh, tons of reviews for the 2022 Toronto International Film Festival. Uh, we're sitting in a movie theater right now waiting for it all to begin, so we decided to record some uh, reviews. So that's why this one sounded a little bit differently. They keep emptying the Coke machines, so we're getting weird draining uh, sounds in the it background. It adds to the ambiance. It always does. Uh, go check out all of our TIFF stuff and our reviews for... Uh, things like uh, Pinocchio and uh, See How They Run and Barbarian. Um, and then we'll have like 30 plus reviews uh, during TIFF. So uh, Untitled Movie Reviews is where you want to be for all of that. Uh, we do have a new episode of the main show, which is a TIFF preview, as well as like this weird hybrid of recording at home and recording on the uh, on the wherever the hell we are because <laughs> uh, we stopped to get tiff tickets go listen to that story it's funny too um untitled underscore movies on letterboxd uh follow me on all those social medias at matt Rohrbeck. i'm eric march and you can find more of my video reviews on rogers tv.com slash cinema scene and on the social medias at em6211 until next time scary terry wine connoisseur